Hi, I'm Dan, and this is my channel, Dan and Denim, where we explore Levi's vintage clothing collection, and also denim in general. Today, we've got a really fun episode. This is a 501 battle of the most historically accurate first blue jean, 1873 double X waist overalls, versus a modern pair of shrink to fit 501s from this year. 150 years, how have they changed? Let's find out. Big shout out to Darren at DZ Thy for helping me acquire this really hard to get pair. I couldn't have done it without your help. Give him a follow on Instagram. So for 150 years of celebrating Levi's riveted garments, Levi's as a company was around for about 20 years before that, making just fabric that they would sell to other tailors around California and Nevada. Jacob Davis was the first to put riveted garments on there in 1870. He did that with a pair of duck pants. And a couple years later, he and Mr. Strauss teamed up and made blue jeans. Now, there are a lot of differences that have changed in 150 years, and I explore all those differences on my channel in the years that they have changed. There are only 150 of these made. There's a lot of special details that only this pair have. And in this corner, I was thinking about going with the birthday selvage, but I figured that's not a really fair fight. They had a little opportunity to spice those up. I think they're great jeans. I think if you have the chance to get them, go get yourself a pair of the Rainforest Selvage birthday selvage jeans. If you want to know more about it, check out James Hurley's video. He does a great example of explaining all the details and fit for the banner and the birthday selvage. This is just a regular pair of 501 shrink to fit. If you want to know what model number this is, it is 00501000. Usually with these jeans, it'll tell you the first two numbers of the year, like 37, 47, and then 501, and then four digits for each variation they've made. Sometimes rigid in the LVC works out to like 17. I don't understand that. But these are just the basic, what I grew up on. So I'm returning to my roots a little bit with this. So let's start with the limited edition. Only 150 pairs made of this 1873 first blue jean. It comes in this aluminum case. It's a little rickety, still pretty. There's been a few containers. I think the tow rope with the oil tank was one of my favorites. Otherwise, there's a lot of cool bags they've made. You get a copy of the patent. It shows the diagram on one side and then the writing of the text. You can watch my 1873 video if you want me to read this to you. It's pretty. I thought it was gonna be miniature, but I like it. You also get a letter. You get a letter in most of these double X and historic 501 pairs. And I read the letter in the duck episode. Then you have the jeans, which is the main thing you're buying. This is made of Japanese denim. It would have been made of Amiskag denim before, originally in 1873, nine ounce. And you can see it's made with a natural indigo. It's just so beautifully colored. It is one of the most beautiful colored. And as you get it wet and it starts to break in, it will become the most beautiful color of all time. I, I just love that shade of blue so much. Now, if you'll look, you'll see a lot of details, or you won't. That's kind of the thing and how you can test this versus this. So, I want you to point out that they used to have suspender buttons. They had three pairs of suspender buttons, two in the front, one in the back. And you wore that you held them with suspenders before belt loops. They used to say Levi's on the buttons and on these rivets, but for the first couple pairs, they didn't. You also have the patch in the center instead of on the right. We think that moved about 1890. The other way of fastening your pants is with a cinch. So you poke these metal parts here, and then you can stick it through this fabric yoke and tighten it. It honestly gives you about half a size difference. It doesn't give you, you can't fit into something radically different. But, you know, you have a big meal, you loosen it, you are 
feeling a little empty, you tighten it up. Some of them are slight cinches, some of them are poke. Historically, they were all poke. Now, the old patch it used to say was actually just text. They really wanted to stretch the, the writing on it. They also had sewn on buttons instead of the shank ones. Sewn on buttons tend to fall off, so I don't recommend them on most pairs. But when you're wearing them, they feel like you're not wearing anything at all in the button area. Now, there was no arcuate on the first pairs. About 1874, 1875 is when they put that arch on there called the arcuate. You had one pocket instead of two. The fourth pocket at the time, the watch pocket, was raised actually to the belt line. And one of the really special things about this pair that the this is the only Levi's vintage clothing item that has this, and it's a gusset. It's this fabric in here, makes it like a triangle. So that triangle gusset is what's very special to this pair. The pair that we found, the nine rivets pair, which we think are dated to 1873, 1874, don't have the gusset. That's the oldest pair of denim jeans we have. In the Smithsonian Museum are a pair of duck pants, and they have the gusset. So that's why we think that these might have had the gusset too for the first year. One of the other things, and the birthday selvage are selvage. What do we mean by that? We mean that if you open up the denim, not on both sides, but on one of the sides, you'll see this line. That white line, that tells you that it's selvage denim. That tells you that it's a higher quality of denim that's going to last longer, made stronger. And it was just white. And then over the years, about 1927, they added in a red line to distinguish Levi's from other companies. Now let's look at the details of this pair. We see two pockets. That's a big thing. 1901, that happened. We see the arcuate on there. And that's a double needle arcuate. As compared to a single needle, this was done by a machine, not a hand. The two horse patch started in 1890. They went to paper in 1955. And then they added this part on in 1970. You can see that the coloring is not a natural indigo, but rather a synthetic, and that makes it darker. It will lighten up over time, but this is that dark, rigid color. If we look on the inseam leg, we'll see that there is no selvage. This is just regular denim. This is just cotton denim weave, not done with the selvage process. Of course, everyone's familiar with the red tab. That didn't start till 1937. And it went to a small E in 1971. We also have the shank buttons. And they will say Levi's on there. It's nice to know that this modern pair doesn't have rickety buttons. But even amongst the LVC collections, a lot of them still have these very rig uh, jangly buttons on them. This particular pair was made in Egypt which isn't bad compared to a lot of them being made in China. Egypt was the foundation of cotton. Terrible human rights record, but they're good for tourism. Uh, the limited edition pair are made in Japan. Most good denim is made in Japan. Levi's stopped making items in America in 2016. Uh, hopefully they will reopen one of their factories, but as of now, no, no chance of it. Belt loops, 1922. And here's the uh, guarantee tag that they print on the inside pocket bag. These pockets feel more delicate than some of the ones from the 90s when I started, but that's about one of the only differences. It's kind of nice to see that they didn't switch 501s to that pleather patch. It's, now, it's still the same old uh, paper patch and small E. They didn't switch to big E like they did with all the other items. One of the other cool details about this pair that I forgot to mention is the denim pocket bags. The pocket bags were actually made of denim instead of cotton. And that actually makes it very sanitary. The indigo ink, especially the synthetic indigo, 
and denim itself are very hygienic materials that don't attract bacteria. Oh, and I forgot to mention for all you non-vintage fans, originally they had a rivet right in the center of the crotch. That got taken out after the owner in 1940 I uh, was sitting next to a campfire and it heated up. We'll test out that theory in one episode. So here is the fit of the 1873s. First blue jean. I'm a 31, I'm wearing 30s. They fit, they're a little tight in the waist, but then you can see there's still a little room. Now doing a tub soak, I would get it nice fit in all of this. These 1870 pairs, they put pretty baggy legs, but this one, no. This one fits pretty nicely. You can do this cuff because you have a selvage line. If you don't have a selvage line, I wouldn't do the cuff. Now they ride, here's my navel, and here's my waist. So they ride slightly up, but about in the middle. I can wear them down at my waist. But you see, then you got a lot more crotch room. And that's all about shrinking. You want to get that shrink going on in there. Let's pair it with a triple pleat blouse from ERA. I really like this look of the uh, double cinch and patch together. Now for the uh, modern 501s, I got 31. And I have a little bit of room here, but given that it's a shrink to fit, that's kind of what you want. So, this is the 31, a little room, but if I went 30, it would be too tight. And I want that shrink to fit. This would be great for a tub soak, but I want to do them from rigid. Otherwise, these feel a little rougher than the uh, 1873. The denim's not as creamy. So I don't, uh, but it's still what I grew up on. Now you can see you don't have a selvage line. You just have this fabric exposed. You, that's a bad thing. Don't do that. Just hem them, get your fit, or you can do an inside tuck if you want. <laughs> just the right amount of room to really feel comfortable and then they will shrink. Let's match this with a type two jacket. You see, just still classic. Even after 70 years, it's still just classic items. Look, overall, I think these are both great pairs of jeans. This is really the crowning jewel of my collection. I don't know when I will wear them, but I, I, I couldn't pass it up. And having these is just, it's the thing I grew up thinking, whoa, what were they like? What, what could they possibly be like? Have they changed? And yeah, they've changed a lot. Are these still a modern pair of jeans that you can wear? Yeah, that's the really cool thing about them. They're actually more wearable than some of the other older garments they've had. What do I think of just your basic run of the mill shrink to fit 501s? Oh, I think it's like the best product of all time. Of course, I think the vintage collection, I'm so grateful for them doing. I'm so grateful for all of this stuff. And I was able to get in on it before it went out. And who knows what the future holds. This is what I grew up on. This is just the classic thing that I know. 
And it has been seven years since I've gotten myself a pair of shrink-to-fit, regular, non-selvage 501s. I hope you'll join me in the episode of Wearing From Rigid, where I show you how to break in a pair of rigid 501s from their rigid state to wearing, just being loose and feeling comfortable like any other pair of jeans that you would have. I'll be honest, with these limited edition pairs, you feel weird wearing them. You're wearing something a lot extra than you need to be. With a pair of just run-of-the-mill, it's something that you're going to make your own. You're going to have a lot more adventures in a pair like this than you would in a limited edition pair. Do I notice the difference in the denim quality? Do I notice a difference in what they've done? Yeah, yeah, I do. But you don't need the strongest denim. You want something that doesn't rip over time, or that rips nicely. Can you get a better selvage denim for about the same price? About, yeah. For some reason, I don't know why, but the 00501000 are cheaper in America than everywhere else. Also, America kind of got screwed with the vintage collection, how they didn't release a lot of this last stuff there. If you get the chance to try on some vintage, I really recommend it. Otherwise, I think this is still just the gene to go with. Hey, so this part of the video is for my vintage fans, my LVC guys, comparing the 150th anniversary to the 125th anniversary from 1999. Levi's announced LBC in 1996. It was supposed to be a one season limited edition run, but then they kind of got a little delayed and then swept up with the 125th anniversary for the rivet and decided to make some of these. So how did the two jeans compare? Well, this one, 125th anniversary, is more of a celebration jean. It, had, it feels like a modern pair of jeans, but with the details of something from like an 1890 pair with shank buttons. It does have the duck and denim patch rib patch, but uh, of course it has that 1875 date on it. Really sturdy shank buttons, uh, slide cinch, so you don't have to poke anything. And of course, inside pocket bag, reading, 125th, five years, and celebrating that. So when you buy these, you get a pair of jeans that you can wear. You get something that still has all the details of the historic jeans, a little bit inaccurate for 1873, but you also get something that's celebrating that. Now this particular pair is made in America. Most, I think all of them are, if you get them from 99, but there are a few others made in like 2007, 2013. Some of those made in America, they some might be made in Turkey. Doesn't really matter. It's a celebration gene. Now, the 150th anniversary is as if you were walking into one of their stores in 1873, what you'd be getting. As little stamping as possible, trying to make it as historically accurate as possible. I'm really glad they went out with this kind of way. I think it sucks they only had 150 pairs and America's was very delayed. They did offer it at a lower price when they finally did release it. Otherwise, as far as like, I, I love having my 1873s that were pretty much the 125th anniversary. And now I got these. In comparison, you know, they both say I love Levi's, but they're not the most sturdy jeans you're going to buy. They're really just... I want to be historically aligned. I would probably get more wear out of these. I have worn them. I use them in my uh, washing during the winter video. And these I will probably be wearing. Uh, right now in my life, I'm just, I'm, I'm really excited about having a pair of regular 501s. I can just uh, wash and deal with the kid and get dirty. Once I'm past that stage, I will be working these in. I'm also breaking in from rigid a pair of 37s, but I'm taking my sweet time with it. I'm trying to get my pictures every day with this one. I, 
I think I did pretty well with my haul for the season. Everything's going away. And I, there are still a few items that are only available in Japan. I was able to get the duck pants that I really, really wanted. These are like the crowning jewel in my collection. And I will have to say that I like the t-shirt, but then as soon as I got it and I started to notice the six things. So stay tuned. The next chapter, we'll talk about these six images and what they mean. This tee is made of soft, stretchy cotton, much softer than the 50s hem tees. I like that the sleeves go down a little longer. I got my true size, but you can downsize if need be. I'm glad I got it, and the images are pretty cool. So let's take a look at it. Picture one, Mr. Strauss, given credit for the whole shebang. Picture two, the miners who first wore the jeans. And then picture three is another miner, talking about how the pockets would rip from gold nuggets that were bigger than your thumb. But of course, rivets were the improvement of this. Picture four and five both have two horse logos. Picture four is the two horse logo. And I can't believe they included the word torture in there. We just did an episode debunking that. Picture five, the two horse leather patch. Of course, turned to paper in 1955. This one is an S501 from the 1940s war era. And in picture six, this is a really nice touch. The measurement guide for shrink to fit. So if you're going to wear from rigid or tub soak or throw in the washing machine, what you need to upsize for. And then the women's size conversion table. Women are supposed to measure at the hips, but in some sense, they should just get two waist sizes up and then that should fit them. But doing that shrink will shrink the waist. I think this t-shirt design is based on a historical item from the 70s, but I'm not sure about that. I think they should have included Jacob Davis, and maybe the flasher instead of another two horse logo. What do you think they should have included? What t-shirt did you get? A little bit of a channel update. I'm still doing the 501 videos going chronologically, finishing up the 19th century, hopefully in the next few months, and look forward to the 1870 Nevada reviews in the year 1879. What did you get from this collection? Are you angry or upset at Levi's not giving a, a full catalog to the whole world and just restricting some to Japan? Do you live in Japan and not really care? Or Korea or Hong Kong, I guess are the same thing. A quick update about what's going on with the Levi's vintage clothing collection and everything I've heard. Spring 2023, the last season that American Levi's vintage clothing collection is existing. Seems like Levi's is closing all their sublines, LVC, made and crafted. And they're trying to just do one line. We don't know if it's going to be called premium or if it's just Levi's. Japan has licensing for the vintage, so they can keep making all that they want. I got these from a website called uh, Rakuten, and the store was JoeNet. They had these, but they didn't have some of the other items, like a rigid triple pleat blouse. So maybe you can still find some items that are being made every year in Japan, and if you, you know you can buy them from one of these sites. Otherwise, you got to try for getting it out of Japan from eBay or some of the store that will ship worldwide. You're going to have to pay tariffs in most countries. Otherwise, uh, what, is El what is Levi's planning on doing for the rest of the world? Because they, they, why they're going to do something to take your money. And I, what I have seen, what I have heard, well, there is the Made in Japan line that takes the Made in Crafted, and instead of being made in China, they're made in Japan, and they might continue with this Made in Japan line that's still uh, maybe some shrink to fit, maybe some invented items, maybe some semi-historical items. Also, the premium line, I've seen things like a uh, S506 Type 1-esque jacket that was made in Bangladesh. So you'll see some of these historic type items, maybe something with the cinch, maybe something um, with uh, selvage.
will happen. I'm really hoping that they step up their game and they make the 0, 0, 0, 0, It's two zeros, 501, and then four zeros. And that's just the regular shrink to fit jeans. I'm hoping they'll start making these out of selfish in the next couple of years. I've also heard about best of red tab. And if you say that, it kind of sounds like what LVC started out as back in 1996. They said, hey, let's make a few items from 1936 to 1962. Do them as historically accurate as we think we can and just do a one off. And that was those were all red tab items. So maybe they'll do something like that. I've also heard that they're going to step up their game on the lot one customs. And you might be able to get a pail of lot one tailored through the mail instead of going to one of their few stores around the world that does it. Otherwise, it looks pretty grim as far as the basic fan base is. It's, we're not going to have lookbooks. We're not going to have uh, items that are just easily available throughout the Levi's websites around the world. A lot of my viewers live in places like Canada or Singapore where they have a very limited LVC line or they have nothing at all. A lot of people try to go into the stores and look for the items and they can't find them. As of now, they're, they're actually taking the collections off of a lot of websites. I can't directly go to Poland's where I live website and find the collection for LVC. I have to go to the page that I have already bookmarked or I can type in uh, the specific item in Google and it should find it on the website. That's how you're going to have to see what they have because they should still have some stuff going on in sale as they're trying to push all the stock out. Get what you can while you can, and it should still be on eBay, Grailed, Vinted, Poshmark, are the basic sites, and hopefully you can get the items that you still want to get. Since getting the duck pants, I feel very complete in my collection, but there's still a lot of things that I would like to hunt down over time. Uh, this channel exists as a community so that we can try and sell and buy those items, trade for what you really want to get when you want to get it, and be patient because things do come and go around. Otherwise, it has been the greatest thing, I really got to say. I want to do a funeral episode for it and really have you guys talk about your experiences with LBC because it's something I dreamed of. Seeing that May 1873 date on all the Levi stuff going up, wondering what were jeans like back then? And then going through and trying to make an outfit with all the other items and getting into the whole history of it. So we have this channel at least, and we have the future. We have the items that have been made. I'm Dan. Thanks to my Patreons. Thanks to all you subscribers and viewers. Let me know what you think about it all. Love your jeans. <laughs>